So a true value. When we look at the right-hand side, when we feed in a false false, what we get back out is a true value. When we feed in false true, what we get out is a true value. On the right-hand side, when we feed in false true, we get a true value out. Similarly, when we feed in true false, we get a true value. And on the right-hand side, when we feed in true false, we get a true value. When we feed in a true true, we get a false. And similarly over here, when we feed in a true true, we also get a false. So everything is matching on each particular possible pairing of inputs, we get the same output. Okay? And this is what, what we call, I suppose, proving logical equivalence of two propositional statements. Yeah? Okay? So what we've actually shown here through truth tables is that P and the with Q's negation, the negation of P and the with Q, is actually logically equivalent to the negation of P or with the negation of Q. Okay? Now, why is this important? Okay? Well, this is these particular laws allow us to, I suppose, reduce the com reduce down the, the complexity of our propositional statements and allow us to put propositional statements into what's known as conjunctive normal form and disjunctive normal form. I'll deal with that in a later video, which is important when we want to simplify things. Okay? And we need to look for patterns and so on. Okay? But the important thing here is this, is that on the left-hand side here, let's see how many operators we have. We have a negation and we have an and. So there's two operators here. On the right-hand side, what have we got? We've got the, uh, the negation here, we've got the or, and we've got the negation. There's three operations here. So actually, from a cost perspective, if a cost, these two things are logically equivalent, but there's a cost of, let's say, three units here, because there's three operators to be implemented, whereas over here there's a cost of two units, okay? So depending on where, which, what way your machine is optimized, it might be optimized for ands and negations or ors, okay? It might be quicker to implement, okay, this version, okay, of the statement compared to this version, or it might, be, uh, it might be quicker to actually implement this compared to that, okay? So that's the Morgan's first law. Okay. What about his second law? So let's actually have a look at that in a little bit more detail. Okay. So his second law says something like this. Okay. So the second law says that, and I'll do it in both with both notations. Okay. That the negation of P or with Q, okay, is equivalent to, okay, the negation of P and with the negation of Q. Okay. That's one way to write it. Let's use our bars this time. So an, an equivalent way to write it okay, is that P ord with Q bar is equivalent to P bar and with Q bar. Actually, there's a little rule here, and it says this. It's probably it, and it's it's more appropriate maybe to use this particular essay little little rhyme here when we have it in this particular notational form. So it says this: when you want to apply the Morgan's law, when you have a negation across an operator, okay, what you can do is you can break the bar. You can see the bar is broken here, okay. You can break the bar and you flip ors to ands and ands to ors. So what we did here was we broke the bar to give us two broken bars, okay, and the or went to an and, yeah. Okay. So that's how I understand that, and that's how I'm, I'm, I'm able to keep this thing in my mind, let's say, when I'm, when, when, when I'm dealing with the Morgan's Laws. Okay. But we'd like to show that the left-hand side here is equivalent, is equivalent to the right-hand side here, okay, to the right-hand side. And the way we'll do it is we'll build a true table for the left-hand side, and we'll build a true table for the right-hand side, and we'll show under all possible inputs that both of them are have give the exact same output. So let's take the right-hand side. So the true table, so the true table okay, for P or with Q bar. So let's build a true table. We can do it really quickly. Okay. So the inputs are P's and Q's. So we put down P, Q. All the possible, uh, I suppose, pairings of truth values is false, 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 true, true, false, true, true. And we want to evaluate this. So before we can do the bar, we need to do the OR. So let's evaluate P OR with Q. Okay. Well, we know the way an OR works. An OR is only ever false when both of the inputs are simultaneously false. So the only place it's simultaneously false is here. So we get a false. They're not there. They're not there. They're not simultaneously false either there. So they must be all true. Okay. And then we can now and now we can actually evaluate the negation. Okay. Uh, so we can actually take P OR with Q. We can take the P OR with Q column and now we can negate it. So falses go to trues. 
trues go to falses, okay? Trues go to falses, okay? So this is the evaluation here of the left-hand side of this particular propositional statement, okay? This equivalence. The true table for the right-hand side, the true table, okay? For the right-hand side, which is P bar ended with Q bar, okay? Well, we need to build a true table. So how many inputs have we got? We have P's and Q's. So let's list them. P's and Q's and all the possible states they can be simultaneously in. So we have false, 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 true. We have true, false, true, true. Once again, before we can do the AND, we need to evaluate both sides of this particular expression. Okay, so we do need to do the negation of the P and the negation of the Q. So let's do P negated. Well, that means we take the P column and we negate the values. So falses go to trues, trues go to falses, trues go to falses, okay? Let's do the negation of the Q column. So the Q column negated, we take the truth values and we negate them. So false goes to true, true goes to false. False goes to true, true goes to false. Now we have evaluated the left hand upper hand and the right hand upper hand for this particular AND. So now we can do the AND. So it's going to be P bar ANDed with Q bar. It's really saying AND the P bar column with the Q bar column. We know the way an AND works. An AND is only ever true when both of the inputs are simultaneously true. Which means that it's true here. They're not simultaneously true here, either here, and neither there. So they're all falses down here. And once again, we can see that when we feed in a false false to the left hand side, we get a true value. Out. When we feed in a false false to the right hand side, we get a true value. Out. When we feed in a false true, we get a false. When we feed in a false true, we get a false. And when we feed in a true false, we get a false. And a true false, we get a false. When we feed in a true true over here, we get a false. And when we do the same thing over here, when we feed in a true true, we also get a false. Okay? So actually what we've shown here, once again, through true tables, is that this particular expression here on the left-hand side is logically equivalent to this particular expression over here on the right-hand side. Okay, guys. Uh, a little bit long this video was, uh, but I hope it was some in some way intuitive and helpful. Uh, it was dealing with uh, showing, it was an example of showing logical equivalence, and we used De Morgan's two laws as an example in this particular case. So once again, guys, uh, my name is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland, and I hope this video was some way in some way intuitive, and more importantly, I hope that was helpful for you. And once again, thanks for watching.